Hey guys, so this video is going to be covering the Coagulation Cascade Lecture by Dr. Mary R. Smith. And she may have said in lecture that you don't need to know the Coagulation Cascade and have it memorized, but I found last year the longer I spent with the lecture, I realized that the more you can't really know everything about the Coagulation Cascade if you don't know the Coagulation Cascade. So I, I had a really hard time with the figures that she gave us trying to figure it out, but um, I found this really nice method online that's really simple and streamlined, um, so you can probably have this memorized by the end of this video. So keep in mind, it's just a baseline to build off of. There's a lot of minor factors and stuff that I'm leaving out, but if you want to if you want to review those, you can come to my tutoring sessions and we can talk about them there. So for the overview of the cascade, there's the intrinsic and there's the extrinsic pathways, and we're going to do the intrinsic first because those are the more complicated one, and it's activated by negatively charged surfaces, which goes from 12 to 12A. And I'm going to be leaving out the step from 12 to 12a and just write 12a. And also, these are supposed to be Roman numerals, but it really doesn't matter. So we go from 12a, which activates 11, into 11a. And that's fairly straightforward, easy to remember. But we go from 11a, activating 9, to make 9a here. And 9a acts onto 10 to make 10a. And then 10a acts on 2 to form 2a. And this is the prothrombin to thrombin step. Um, and you'll want to know both the names for them and the numbers. And then 2a acts on 1 to form 1a. And this is the fibrinogen to fibrin step. And then this 1a is fibrin, and fibrin becomes cross-linked to form a more stabilized clot. Now, this is pretty simple, straight backbone of numbers here, but it's not the whole story. So there, there are a few cofactors that we want to write down as well. They're sort of like the buddies that go along with it here. So 9 goes along with 8, which is a nice just numbers right next to each other. And 8, this cofactor 8, forms a complex with 9 in order to activate 10. And 10 also has its own cofactor, which is 5, which is, I just remember it because 5 is half of 10. And then finally, this cross-linking step here with fibrin actually has a cofactor along with it, which is 13. Now, these are the main cofactors involved, but there's also other interactions as well. So thrombin 2A here has its own interactions which help to create a positive feedback loop within the cycle. So thrombin actually acts on 5, 8, and 11 to create a positive feedback loop. Now, as you can imagine, with any positive feedback loop, things can get out of control really fast, and that's why this cascade is so complex, because it offers a lot of chances to inhibit any of these interactions in order to really finely control how you clot. And this right here, then, this is the intrinsic pathway, and that's the entire thing. So you can see it's pretty fairly involved, and but the extrinsic pathway is fairly simple comparatively. So the extrinsic pathway is just factor 7, and being activated to 7a, and then that acts on 10 directly. And that's 10 is the beginning of the common pathway, they say, because they converge right here. And now 7a is activated. You require tissue factors to do so. And this is important because tissue factors are produced when the, the blood vessel is damaged. And so if you're ever wondering why not all the numbers are here. Tissue factors used to be called factor 3, and factor 4 is actually just calcium. Now, factor 6 is, a, is just not used at all anymore. And But this right here, that just tissue factors plus 7a to 10, that's, and then going on down the common pathway, that's the entire extrinsic pathway. Pretty simple. And the nice thing about this figure is that you have these purple grouping here. These four purple ones, 2, 7, 9, and 10, these require vitamin K in order to work, and that's why if you have a vitamin K deficiency, you end up with, you can have a bleeding disorder because 
your cascade is no longer functioning correctly to clot properly. So hopefully this gives you a, a nice foundation to figure out the rest of the lecture. And you can see how stuff like plasmin and antithrombin and TPA and there's just a whole tidal wave of acronyms um, that you have to learn. And you can see how they fit into this pretty simple diagram. And if you have any questions, just let me know. My name is John, and I wish you all way more than luck.